It has made its reputation as the go-to machine for video and photo editing. But as a long-time PC user, I gotta admit, I was a skeptic. Then the Mac Studio arrived and I was asked to, not just to try it out, but to see what this could possibly bring to the table. So I gave it a shot and honestly, it blew through everything I threw at it. And we're talking about 3D renders, Premiere Pro exports, multi-window viewing, and photo editing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about why the Mac Studio is great for creators. I've been a professional video editor for about 7 years now, both commercially and now for our YouTube channel. And I've dabbled on all major NLEs from Final Cut to Premiere Pro and to DaVinci Resolve. And I still feel that Premiere is still the fastest and most efficient editing software for my needs. Now, of course, Final Cut only supports macOS, but our studio and editors use Adobe Suite and Premiere Pro. So it's, it's much easier to just hand over projects when necessary. Honestly, it, it helps. Prior to the Mac Studio, I was using a Windows-based PC, 32 gigabytes of RAM, RTX 3070 Ti, and let, let's just say very fancy RGB lighting, huh? It's where I did all of my work, get to dabble in a little bit of gaming as well, and for the most part, it does its job very well, and I was content. Now, I'm gonna keep it pretty agnostic here because comparing the Mac Studio to my current PC setup just doesn't make sense. Even at the Mac Studio's base level M1 Max, it would outperform my current setup, but I was not prepared for what I was about to experience. Here's why. Point one, the Mac Studio is a great choice because this is pretty much it. It's compact, it's small, and I'm just surprised at how much performance it packs in this small shell compared to my editing rig. Now for those who owned a Mac Mini or even that odd looking trash can slash cheese grater Mac Pro back in the day, this design is what Apple should have done years ago. Don't fix what isn't broken. And because it's so small and so portable, it can fit in my backpack or even my travel case. Throw in a portable monitor and boom, you're set. So if I needed to bring my work with me, I can. And I did. Yes, I had the Rona and I brought this back with me during isolation so that I could work. How crazy is that? <laughs> Having to work. But it just amazes me how small it is for a pro desktop machine. Even bringing this over to the Geekbench from my desk, was a breeze. Speaking of which, desk space is such a commodity these days and I gotta tell you, I was able to fit both my desktop PC and the Mac Studio on my desk, which includes all the peripherals, including four displays. Talking about being over the top. Huh? Point number dos, connectivity. If you ever had issues having more ports on your MacBook or iMac, the Mac Studio has solved all those problems. It's pretty much the all in all digital content creators dream when it comes to connecting with other devices and equipment. Like Zinio over here, photographer slash cinematographer, he's gonna have a ball of a time by how the SD card slot sits right in front for easy access. I'm having a ball of a time by how the SD card slot sits right in front for easy access. See what I mean? Yeah. Alongside that are two Thunderbolt 4s, which is exclusive to the M1 Ultra Trip model. And at the back, we've got a whopping four Thunderbolt 4 ports, more than enough to connect multiple monitors and drives. Gotta tell you, it's got more ports uh, than PSA. That was Zinu's joke, by the way. Yes. You also have two USB Type A's and a HDMI 2.0 port that outputs at 4K 60Hz. Basically, if you wanted to, you could support up to five displays, four of them over USB-C and one over HDMI. Now, I've tested this with four monitors and <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. If you thought two monitors were enough for video editing, hmm, wait till you try four. I've got one for the main timeline on Premiere Pro, the other one for colors and effects, another one as my reference monitor, and a small and portable monitor so that I can watch my Korean dramas. Yes, I watch Korean dramas. It's nice. Which goes perfectly into point number three, Performance. The Mac Studio and the M1 Ultra is undoubtedly the most powerful machine I've had the chance to use in my career. And of course, there are divided thoughts about it, but if you take a look at Apple's track record, the Apple M1 Silicon's graphics performance has been at the top since day one. And the reality is, if you're watching this, you are already considering this for your studio or home office for creative work. That means you artists, you designers, you video professionals, and creatives alike. 
We all know too well that videos are getting heavier. 4K, 6K, 8K workloads, ProRes, RAW. Oh my god! Now, I won't bore you with any grounds or data as this is more of a consumer experience point of view, but be sure to check out the links and references in the description below. What I can tell you is that running Premiere Pro has been a smooth sailing experience since it can run natively with Apple Silicon. Compared to my Windows-based PC, the Mac Studio has had no system crashes, no stability drops, and just runs very well on 4K. Playback is also very smooth even with 8K ProRes footage, and there were times where I had to downscale it to maybe just about half to a quarter playback resolution, but other than that, I've never had to use proxies on my timeline, even after adding motion graphics and color grading. Now everyone knows how Adobe Suite can get really wonky on a PC and constantly having to fix various software hiccups before they could really do their job, okay? We, we, we all know that. Yo! Ah, the thing goes... So the Mac Studio takes the win here and the Mac Studio is shockingly quiet even doing heavy rendering in After Effects and even on Blender. Point four, it's all part of the ecosystem. ecosystem. One of the best things about owning Apple products is that it's all connected. If you own other devices like an iPhone, iPad and even accessories like the Apple Watch and AirPods, it just works, okay? There's no denying that. It works. The Apple ecosystem basically includes every product they made. But it's not just hardware alone. Apple has designed their software to make it easy for users to access their photos, music, contacts, and more. My favorite feature is, of course, AirDrop. Oh, I love AirDrop. So AirDrop is where your devices can send files between each other through Wi-Fi sharing. Now, I use it very often to send footage from my iPhone to my Mac Studio and back and forth to edit vertical videos and post them on our social media platforms. This is probably one of the biggest game changers for me switching out from Windows to Apple. Imagine having to transfer photos and videos back and forth using a thumb drive or a portable hard drive or even Google Drive. That, that's a lot of drives. But you know, what I'm trying to say is that it's enough to break your concentration. With that, it goes to my final point, point number five, value. Overall, I think it is important to look at the entire Apple ecosystem if you're planning to get any Apple device because the ecosystem works but requires an investment and commitment and people may get sucked into the Apple ecosystem without knowing it. Yep. Now, the Mac Studio is going to be great for creative professionals. It's going to provide you with the blazing performance for creating content. And if you're willing to pay the higher price for the smooth and seamless integration that the Apple ecosystem offers, then yeah, yeah, it, it actually makes sense. Now, I would suggest comparing Apple devices via the website and see what works for you. In most cases, I would recommend the Mac Studio with the M1 Max chipset instead as a more budget-friendly option for those who are not going to tap as much of the horsepower that the M1 Ultra provides. But there's also the 2022 MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air for more portable solutions. And I get it, there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution here, but Apple's got you covered with that extensive lineup. So do check it out. With that said, we're gonna wrap up the video. Thank you so much for watching. Do give us a like and subscribe. Follow us on our socials and be sure to check out all our other amazing videos right here on Geek Culture. Check it out. It's great content. We worked hard to do this stuff, you know? It's hard work. It's hard work. <laughs>